Hi and welcome to this NPRO tutorial. In this video, I will show you how you can uh, simulate a district with an e-network in NPRO. Let's dive into it. Um, let me show you the tool. Um, so we can click on create new project and then we can uh, select district as a project type. Um, uh, we can select a location um, from one of the predefined locations that is connected to the weather data. Um, and here on the bottom, we can um, select the uh, heating supply uh, configuration. So in this case, we want a conventional district heating network um, and we don't have any cooling supply. I click on create new project. And then we have uh, three pages here on the left hand side. First one are the buildings. So we define which buildings are part of the district that we want to uh, supply. Um, here we have a supermarket, a residential building, um, and I click on it and then we can see that we can um, select the building type from a list of building types. We can also insert um, default values from our database if we want to, um, and then um, yeah, define the space heating demand, the domestic hot water demand. Um, I click on calculate demand profiles and we be, uh, then we get the um, hourly profiles of the uh, of the building um, and there's one important setting which is the supply and return temperature so um, here it's 65 degrees celsius that is needed to um, cover the heating demands so this should be always lower um, smaller than the um, network temperature so that the network can um, really supply the building directly um, on the bottom, we have uh, the energy system. In this case, we don't need to um, change anything because we just have uh, the heating, uh, the heat network with a heat exchanger that then covers um, the domestic hot water demand and the space heating demand. Um, on the bottom of the page, we uh, get some first results. So we get the uh, demand profiles of the entire um, district. So the heat uh, demand profile here in red, um, and if we uh, would have cooling, then there would also a line for the cooling demand. We can download the results um, and the profiles with an hourly resolution if we want to do that. Um, but I want to go to the next page here. That's the heat network um, and all the settings um, about the network itself. So we uh, can define the supply temperature of the heat network. Uh, we can also define a sliding uh, temperature curve. So in winter, it would be higher than in summer, for example. Um, if we have a very special configuration, we can also upload our own profile. Um, we can uh, define the losses. So uh, this can be very simple with a, just a loss uh, parameter here, but we can also have a more detailed calculation. If I click on detailed calculation, uh, then we get a list of uh, network sections. And here we can really define, OK, um, what are the sections of the network? Um, what are the branches and so on? What's the diameter um, and also what's the material and the insulation uh, thickness, for example? And um, based on this, we uh, have then um, yeah, a more detailed heat loss calculation. Um, on the bottom, we have some uh, graphs here. Uh, we see the network uh, temperature, supply and a return pipe, as well as the ground temperature, and that is then used to calculate the losses. Uh, on the last page, uh, we have the energy hub. Um, so how do we actually cover the heat demands of the network? So let's, uh, let's choose some uh, technologies. Let's take solar thermal. Let's maybe also use the CHB. We could also uh, use a um, peak load boiler, maybe um, anything else, maybe air source heat pump. So this can be really um, be flexible, defined by the user, depending on what you uh, want to simulate. And in this case, we have four uh, generation technologies for uh, covering the heat demand. And the optimization uh, would then decide, the tool would decide which of the um, technologies are optimal. Um, yeah, let's take it like this. Uh, we can, of course, define all the COP data and the um, and the parameters of the technologies, like the, the orientation and so on of the PV modules uh, in the settings of the uh, technologies. Um, we have to define the uh, investment costs as well as the electricity prices. 
because they uh, influence, of course, the optimization. Um, then I click on size technologies and then the program uh, will calculate what is the optimal configuration um, of the technologies. In this case, we see uh, we first see that the solar thermal is not used at all. Um, so it's not a part of the um, cost optimal system. We have the gas boiler here with, for the peak load. Uh, we have a small uh, heat pump which covers the base load and also the CHP is uh, covering some base load here. Um, then I click on simulate system operation. Um, then we get the uh, an hourly resolution uh, for the simulation and we see, okay, how are the um, the units operated? Um, how does it look like in summer? How is it operated in winter and so on? And get a better feeling of the um, yeah, system behavior. Um, so first we see the um, energy flows in this uh, figure. So we have the CHP here, uh, the boiler, um, and uh, the boiler is covering actually quite a yeah, large share of the heat demand. Um, and um, we can also have a look how does it uh, look in uh, summer, for example. Then we see that the air source heat pump is uh, operated more and contrib contributes more to the heat demand. Um, on the bottom, we see some uh, more detailed uh, results for every um, technology and we can um, visualize also the um, profiles, uh, the operation profiles of the system. Uh, could be a monthly uh, value, but it can also be an annual profile where we really see, okay, when is uh, when is which uh, system um, and technology operated. Um, we can also click on summary, and there we get the most important KPIs of the system. So um, how much energy do we import? Uh, in this case, uh, most of it is natural gas, but we also have some um, renewable electricity generation on site. Um, we have some KPIs regarding the electricity. So here we see that actually all of the PV uh, power can be used directly um, by the system itself. Um, and here we see the uh, different shares of the uh, heat generation units. So uh, the CHP is covering 10% of the or 11% of the heat demand and the uh, gas burner 69% and 20% is covered by the air source heat pump. Um, we see the emissions based on the uh, specific emissions. Of course, all the parameters of the uh, model can be adjusted in the uh, settings. Um, we can uh, also download the results, all the profiles of the system with an hourly resolution uh, as an Excel sheet um, if we want to go into the details. Then on the bottom, we can click on go to result page. Uh, and here we find um, yeah, the most important uh, results. Um, we also have the economic results. So um, what are the investments, for example, for the air source heat pump? Um, what are the energy costs, for example, for the uh, gas um, consumption, gas import, um, and also the other cost shares? We have the cash flow table um, to see if the uh, system is, uh, um, yeah, is, is economic or, uh, uh, solution or not. And um, on the top, we can um, go to some summary and scenarios again. And here we can also um, create a new scenario. So we can say um, duplicate scenario. Uh, I will click on this button here. And then we will see that uh, in this project one that I just created before, um, we have now a scenario number two. Um, and I will open it. And um, I will uh, say let's uh, let's calculate a different um, energy system. I will uh, add electric heater in this scenario. Um, click on next. We could also change the buildings if we want to, but I will uh, keep them as they are. Um, could also change the network parameters, um, but now I will really focus on um, getting rid of this gas boiler maybe and replacing it by an electric heater. Um, and um, yeah, let's see what happens then. Um, I will click on size technologies again, and then the system will look a little bit different, of course. Um, so probably it's using, yeah, it's using the electric heater here for peak load, uh, for covering the peak loads. 
and uh, we have the CHP, which is still covering base load and the SOC pump also. Um, and I click on uh, simulate system operation to um, yeah, get the hourly resolution and all the details about the, um, about the operation of the system. Normally it takes, doesn't take more than like yeah, 10 seconds roundabout um, to, uh, to finish the simulation. Um, yeah, that's a new um, energy flow chart here. Uh, we see that the CHP um, is generating electricity. It can be used by the electric heater, could be also used by the air source heat pump or could be uh, fed into the grid. Um, and uh, let's let's have a look at, at summer maybe. Yeah, then we see most of the heat is uh, really coming from the air source heat pump in this case. Um, and now I go to uh, the result page again, and we want to compare both scenarios. Um, I select the scenario number one that we just created a few minutes ago. Um, I click on OK. And then we see um, the, uh, the, the summary again with uh, first figure here, with the first graph here, like the total annualized costs on the y-axis and the CO2 emissions on the x-axis. And then we can compare both scenarios. Um, we have also some additional charts regarding uh, how much electricity do we, uh, how much energy do we uh, import, and um, also yeah, all the figures that are important for the analysis. So how much uh, renewable electricity do we have in both scenarios, and so on and so on. Um, on the economic result page, uh, we get the economic results. Um, and we can compare both scenarios directly with each other. All right, I hope that helped you a little bit to understand how you can uh, simulate a district with uh, NPRO. Um, if you have any questions, um, please comment um, below the video and I will try to answer them or also make some additional videos if uh, there are still some open questions. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.